Hello everyone, this is the IFC Architect, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be going over the new user interface for Blender BIM. Um, I was going to just include it in the general update video, which is not going to be too far enough from now, but I thought it's big enough and it is at last far enough that it deserves its own video, um, so that it, there's one place for everybody to go look. So I'm actually going to start by activating Blender BIM just to show you how much it's changed. So here I just have your default Blender setup and we're just going to go to Edit, Preferences and I've already got Blender BIM loaded. I just need to activate it. So I'm just going to type BIM and there you can see it now says System Blender BIM. So it no longer says Import Export because it's no longer an importer or an exporter. You're editing things natively. So all you need to do is click Enable Add-on and then it will activate the add-on and I'm just going to close this and then you can see here is the first change. Now Blender BIM loads with a default user interface. It is called the BIM tab. You can see it's highlighted over there. What this does is it automatically sets up your viewport in the way that I've basically been using it since the beginning with the outliner on the left hand side and the properties on the right hand side and this is the first of many changes. So the next thing you can see here in the bottom right Blender BIM has the version number that is being used demarcated. So for all of my videos, um, you'll be able to see the version of that of the software that I'm using. You can see here, I'm using the Blender BIM add-on version 00.230822. That's today's version as a recording. Um, and I'd recommend in the future, if you want to follow the tutorials along, using the version of the day that I'm using it is probably the best way to get the exact same results. Either that or use a newer version. Um, the next thing that you might have noticed is uh, we have a slightly different setup here in the properties panel. This is basically <laughs> where the majority of the changes have happened. And you can see here everything that was Blender BIM that was distributed along all the tabs has now been put into the scene properties tab. This just makes it more accessible and also decouples it from a lot of Blender features so that everything you need to know about Blender BIM is just in one spot. So what it's done is it's created a series of new tabs. Um, so I could have this drop-down menu here. So all of these icons on the top um, are these new spaces. And the only ones you get before starting a project is your project overview, um, quality co and coordination, and the normal Blender properties. So this is what it looks like without Blender BIM installed, basically. So if we click on this uh, drop-down here, we've got each space. So this used to be distributed amongst all the tabs on the left-hand side here and now it has its own spaces. So we're starting with project overview, then there's object information, geometry and materials, drawings and documents, services and systems, structural analysis, costing and scheduling, facility management, quality and coordination and blended properties. And now each one has a hotkey, so you can quickly go to whatever you want to. Obviously they're grayed out because I haven't created a project yet, and I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna say create project. And now that you can see that they are no longer gray. So. Uh, we can go to the next one, object information. You can see there's only two things here. So it's a lot more cleaned up. I don't have to collapse tabs anymore. Um, there is far less information to look at. So there isn't additional Blender stuff. Um, the next one is the geometry and materials. So here we're gonna go into, there's representations, uh, geometric relationships, parametric geometry, materials and styles. I'm gonna show you a little bit more in a second. And then the next one is drawings and documents. So this is no longer in the end panel. So if I press in, um, I'm gonna actually go down to screencast keys. I've just been using the mouse until now. So here's my screencast keys. Um, you can see that there is no longer a um, Blender BIM document documentation tab. It's now consolidated inside of the properties panel which makes it a hell of a lot cleaner. You can see there's just sheets, drawing schedules and references, and there's nothing else here. So it just makes it a lot easier. Obviously you can rearrange these if you want, that's just Blender functioning. Um, but this is a hell of a lot simpler and there's only four items to deal with. The next one is services and systems. Services, systems, services. It's just, there's so little to look at. It's actually looking kind of simple in comparison, but it's the same information. Um, there's structural analysis, analysis models, load cases, loads and boundary conditions. The next one is costing and scheduling, resources, cost schedules, work plans, work schedules, calendars, animation color scheme. And then there's facilities management, um, commissioning and handover, Kobe, 
operations and maintenance brick schema project if you use brick schema it's going under a hell of a lot of development at the moment and references and then obviously our quality and coordination so this is data test um, testing purging data BIM tester differences um, patching debugging clash detection and collaboration and then your normal um, properties tabs so uh, you might notice on the left hand side over here, the T panel. So if I press T, it toggles that panel. We have a whole bunch of new tools. Um, so currently we, instead of having a single BIM tool, it's going, it's broken up into a whole bunch of sub tools, which makes it a hell of a lot easier to get into. So the first one is obviously create wall. So if I just click that and uh, I see I've got my tabs here at the top, there's different walls. So I could say wall 100, and then it's the same story. I can say add wall, or I could say shift A, and I can use the normal tools. So I'm moving the, the cursor, I'm saying shift E, and there you see I have my wall. Now I want to make me create a slab. So I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna say shift A. You can see it's created a slab. I'm gonna press tab, and I'm just gonna edit the slab so that it is the same size as the wall and then I want to create a window or I want to create a door so I just click on the door tool there's a door loaded so I, I just select the wall have my 3d cursor in the right position and say shift a you can see a door has been created I want to create a window select the wall select the window say shift a it's just simplifying the whole process um, and then the same thing for all of these other tools column so I'm just gonna put a column there say shift a I want to create a Beam, click the beam tool, shift A, GZ, I don't know why it still adds at the bottom though. And shift E. Um, I want to create a duct. At the moment, there's no um, duct segments automatically loaded, um, but it will come soon and uh, create a pipe, same story. Um, so you can create a pipe the same way you create a beam. It uses the same logic and the same thing for the ducts. Um, but these tools are here in the meantime. And then obviously there is create element. This is just your BIM tool basically. So it does everything that is not listed there. So if you want to make roofs or you want to make um, coverings or railings, um, this is still the tool you want to use. So you can just click on create element, and then you click on the launch type manager and then you have access to all the IFC types that you want to. So anything that doesn't have a that doesn't have a, an icon or a hotkey, you can just go in here and create it for yourself, um, like a railing type, for instance. Create a new type, make sure it's a railing, and we can say save a new type, you can see there's a railing. So now with my railing type selected, I say shift A and there's a railing. And also fairly easy to edit, you press tab, and you just make sure that these things are normal and then you press tab to get out of it and there's your railing edited. So that's just basically an overview of the um, tool so far. And then the next one is the annotation tool. It looks a bit different, but once you have a drawing, this is essentially where all your annotation goes in. So obviously to create a drawing, I need to save the project. I can go back to my um, project overview and you can see there's something is a bit different. So we can go to project setup um, or we can go here and there's no save button here. So how has this changed? Uh, basically, we go to file and you can see there are two new buttons. One says new IFC project, which has a whole bunch of automatic um, standards built in. And the other one says open IFC project. And now there is a save IFC project and save IFC project as. So essentially when you have Blender BIM installed, it is going to default to Blender BIM and start using that as your when you're in an IFC project, it's gonna use these hotkeys to save your IFC project because we wanna shift from the thinking of this is an import export tool and to change it to, oh, you're actually editing an IFC file, basically. So we're just gonna say uh, save IFC project and say save. Now that it's saved, I can go to my documents, uh, drawings and documents tab. I can go to drawings and I can click that drop down and create a plan at my story level. And then you can see how this has changed. It's automatically categorized the drawings into the different views. So there's a plan view um, category and my plan view is automatically put in there. So I can click on it. I can say activate drawing. 
And then I can go back to my data and change the scale. I can move this and center it. And then it's the same as anything. So either I can click create drawing here, which will create a drawing, or I can go back to the scene properties and I can click on the create drawing button there, which does the same thing, basically. And then from here, we can use the annotation tool. So the annotation tool just has all the annotation items broken down here. Um, and it's just as it was working before. You can still access this from the end panel. So if we press in, um, it's also listed here. Each of these tools is listed on that side, if you prefer that. Um, but this is just a much cleaner, newer way to approach it. Um, so yeah, so these are all the default tags that are loaded um, and the different types of elements, basically, which you're used to by now. Then the next one is the spatial tool. Um, this is for generating spaces. So for instance, if I wanted to close this room off, then I could uh, do that quite easily. Um, so let's go, just go to uh, create wall, and then I'm gonna snap my 3D cursor to this, uh, this edge here. And I'm just going to say Shift A, snap there, Shift E, snap it to the edge there, Shift A, Shift E, Shift A, Shift E. And then I have a closed room. And then using the spatial tool, if I select these walls, holding shift, and I say generate spaces from walls, it'll automatically create an IFC space. You can see it's been created there, which is the correct size. So uh, it's just simplified a lot of processes and made everything much more accessible and much more explorable. Um, you don't have to delve into things. You don't have to um, figure things out, uh, it's much easier to look at and it's much easier to approach. Um, yeah, that's the user interface. Uh, so you can see um, where everything was before. If we click on, let's say, the wall and we go to uh, the object information, this is what used to be inside of the orange object properties tab. So we have the object metadata, the attributes, the type, spatial container, aggregates, there's none, object properties, quantities, and classification references, and then MISC. So instead of being bogged down with all that extra Blender information, um, it's a hell of a lot simpler, and it, it's a lot easier to get into the information that you actually want. So for instance, if I wanted my quantities, I could click this button here, or I could go to my Blender BIM tab, quantity takeoff, and say calculate, and then it automatically lists all the quantities that are in that wall. Um, so it's just much easier, much simpler to get to the information and it's much more straightforward. And then the same thing with our geometry and materials tab. So here we have our representations, our geometric uh, re relationships. Um, so voids and booleans and connections and then our parametric geometry. So for instance, um, we could, we have arrays here. So this is where all the modifiers went. So this modifiers tab no longer has all the IFC modifiers. They're all here in the scene properties. So there's array, um, a sphere jock, if you can use it. And then if we click on perhaps the uh, window here, so if we go to our um, drawings and then we activate the model view and we click on the window and we go back to our the geometry and uh, materials, you can see there's the window generator here in the parametric geometry, which we can just say plus and it will automatically adjust to give us the window parameters, which we can adjust the window size with as we please. When we finish editing, it will adjust it. Um, yeah, so that's all there. And then materials. So here the window has no materials, but the wall has a parametric material, which gives it the, the width. It's just much simpler and it's so much easier to get to the information you want. There's only five things to think about here instead of a hundred. So uh, that is the user interface update. Um, it's pretty dramatic and makes it a hell of a lot easier to use. And I hope this uh, lets more people feel like they can get into it. I would recommend not using a version that's earlier than this date, um, 2308.22. And obviously you can download it in the description.
Excellent. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.